Good morning, everyone, and welcome to World Ocean Day. It's amazing to have you all with us. This is a session which is all about the Arctic Ocean. My name is Jamie, and I run an organization called Encounter EDU. And one of the things we do is the AXA Ocean Education Program. And that has seen me spend seven expeditions, take seven expeditions to the Arctic, and also I've been to the Antarctic once. Now, on World Ocean Day, it's your chance really to ask as many questions about the Arctic and the Arctic Ocean as possible, and we're going to try and get through as many of those as possible. We have had so many questions sent through in advance. We've had sort of over 50. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we focus on those questions and all your curiosity and then we can come back to any of those presentation pieces that we had prepared towards the end. But the real focus today is getting through as many questions as possible. I'm also joined by Ellie, who's a veteran of a number of Arctic expeditions as well. Uh, and we are here just to get you through and inspire you and get through your questions. I've got a huge number of shout outs as well to give. So. This Arctic uh, session for World Ocean Day, we're going to have uh, three main parts. We're going to do some shout outs. Uh, then we're going to get through as many of the pre submitted questions as possible. And then for those of you who haven't submitted your questions in advance and are using the YouTube live chat, we'll get to as many of those as possible. So, a quick note on that. YouTube is a social media platform. That means if you're under 13, it should be an adult uh, using that for you. Please do post questions and comments. Please try and cut out the chat. Now, the main reason for that is so that we can see those questions that need to be answered. Don't worry about posting it a couple of times. I might not be able to get to the live questions until towards the end of this broadcast. And I will continue to say, now is a great time to get your questions up and we can get to those because it's quite hard for me to see the questions at the top of the chat. But without further ado, uh, let's get into some of your amazing shout outs. We have Minnie who's learning at home. Hi, Minnie. Um, we have Martha and Bessie from Kendall in uh, the UK. Hi, both of you. Uh, all the children from RE Moore Primary who are celebrating World Ocean Day from home and all the key workers who are in the school hub. Hi, everybody there. A big hello to the Indigo Group at East Farley Primary. You are all amazing. That's from your teachers. Amazing to have you with us. Um, there's good morning uh, to everyone at King's Court School. And you apparently are all wearing blue. Absolutely fantastic to be wearing blue and to be celebrating World Ocean Day. Uh, the key worker children are uh, working hard in Violet Group at East Farley, and that's with Mrs. Albert and Mrs. Hodgson. Um, good morning to everybody there. Hello to the key worker children in Mrs. Late's uh, class at South um, Witham um, or Witham Academy. Um, hello from everyone at Chesham Primary School. Hello, everyone at Chesham. Um, happy World Ocean Day. Uh, Elliot and Henry uh, say hi to all the children at Market Deeping uh, Community Primary School. Um, and we have also, uh, we have, let's see, we have more. Uh, we have, um, te hi, tell us some interesting facts. I hope you can get some interesting facts from, from some Sunday Deep World School. Hello to all the children there and to hi to Lavender Primary School. A big shout out uh, to children in year three for St. Bede's Primary School in Carlisle. Um, they're working hard with home, working, home learning and we're going to enjoy the whole day working on World Ocean Day, taking part in the live activities. It will mean the world to them to hear a shout out. So a big shout out to all the children at St. Bede's Primary. Um, hello to all the amazing children in year three at Groovel School. And hello to year four from Asbridge Independent School in Preston. And we have one last shout out, and that's one to um, all the um, children 
um, at. In fact, it is to um, year threes at Asbridge, so year threes and year four, fours at Asbridge Independent School in Hutton. Now, we've had so many amazing questions uh, sent through. And over the years of exploring the Arctic, it has come to be one of my favorite places on the planet. It's incredibly beautiful, um, but incredibly fragile at the same time. So diving in, the first question we have is from Ashbridge, and it's how might plastic pollution further affect the Arctic Ocean? Now, it's a great question, and it's one of the things that we've been studying over the past few years plastic pollution in the Arctic, and we go up there every year, we trawl through the Arctic waters to try to find if there are any plastic particles. Now, many of you might know about plastic pollution in the Arctic or in the ocean in general, but because the ocean currents carry it north to the Arctic, scientists are worried that the Arctic might be a sink for plastic, it might be where it collects. Now, how does plastic pollution then harm life in the Arctic? Many of the pieces of plastic we're finding are small pieces, and they're known as microplastics. And scientists are currently working on how that causes harm. And it causes harm especially to the small animals at the bottom of the food chain, and we call them plankton. And the reason why it causes them harm is that they confuse it for algae, the normal food, and eat the plastic particles instead of the algae. Now, that's been well observed in laboratory studies, and we're looking at whether that also occurs in the Arctic Ocean. But if the, these small plankton at the bottom of the food web might be eating plastic instead of their normal food, they're going to have less energy. It could perhaps damage their insides. And then that gets passed up. Those effects get passed up the food chain. Perhaps there's less food to go around for all the other animals that live in the Arctic. Really great question and one that we're actively studying at the moment. Uh, from uh, Sunderdeep World School, um, they've heard... Um, that the glaciers are melting. Is it true? Yes, the glaciers in the Arctic are melting. And of particular concern is an ice sheet, the Greenland ice sheet. Now, for those of you who can find Greenland on a map, maybe after this uh, talk, you'll see that it's covered in ice. And it contains whew, about... Uh, 8% of all the ice on the planet is up there. Now, if that were to melt, uh, sea level would go up by about eight meters, sorry, sub seven meters. And in terms of glaciers melting, it's something that's been observed where we are in the Arctic. So we go somewhere called Svalbard, which is a small island between the top of Norway and the North Pole. And People who have been going up for about 20 years have seen the glaciers retreat massively. In fact, just over to the side here, uh, there is an island. People didn't know it was an island until about five, ten years ago when the glacier retreated and they found out it wasn't actually joined to the land, it was actually an island. So people are seeing glaciers retreating just within lifetimes. It's a very visible effect of environmental change in the, the Arctic? A really great question. And I don't know whether we um, have a photo, but maybe a bit later, of what the inside of an Arctic glacier looks like. Um, it's, um, we'll, we'll bring it up. And um, what you can see here is that a number of years ago, we had to abseil 40 meters down into a glacier um, and look at how the insides work um, to find out how fast it was melting and find, finding out that, in fact, the glaciers in the Arctic, the melt rate is increasing. So really great question. Thank you so much. 
Um, these are all <laughs> these are all great questions. Another from Sunderdeep: Is the Arctic Ocean polluted? Yes, it is. Um, there are a number of ocean pollutants that also occur in the Arctic. Um, we can look at something like mercury, um, a, a chemical runoff um, from industry. We can look at um, other what are called persistent organic pollutants, often caused by manufacturing and industry, which collect in the Arctic Ocean as well. Now, these pollutants do something called accumulate. So if they get into a small animal, those pollutants get into that animal. And then if there are lots of those are eaten by a bigger animal, then they collect those, that pollutant collects more and more and more as it goes up the food chain, all the way up to top of the food chain predators like polar bears. And we're finding that the type of chemicals that are polluting the Arctic, Arctic Ocean, are causing changes to the hormones and changes to the way that those um, animals can reproduce, those polar bears can reproduce. But in terms of the main pollutant that is causing the biggest change in the Arctic Ocean at the moment, that is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And we'll come on to talking more about the impact of carbon and carbon dioxide on the Arctic Ocean. But there's two main things, one of which is warming. We can come on to warming later. And the second is ocean acidification. So where carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is absorbed into the ocean and changes its chemistry, which makes it harder for different types of life to survive and thrive. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> from uh, this is from St. Bede's Roman Catholic Primary School. Uh, and Neve would like to know, what is the deepest part of the Arctic Ocean? Neve, that's a great question. Uh, the deepest part of the Arctic Ocean is called, called the Malloy Deep. And that's in the middle really of, of what's called the Fram Strait. And that's the gap that the ocean passes through between Svalbard, where we're normally based, as you can see behind me, and Greenland. So the Arctic connected, Arctic Ocean connected to the Atlantic Ocean through the Fram Strait. Now, the Malloy Deep is about five and a half uh, kilometers deep, so 5,550 meters deep. And there's only one person ever who's been to the bottom of the Malloy Deep in a submersible, and that's Victor Vescovo as part of the Five Deeps expedition. And that was just last year that someone went down, all the way down to the bottom of the Malloy Deep. But great question, Eve. Thank you for that. Um, another great question uh, from St. Bede's Roman Catholic Primary School. And Daniel, looking at what the biggest pollution problem in the Arctic Ocean is, and I think I'm going to have to go back to my previous question about is the Arctic Ocean also polluted and talk about carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is causing warming and warming is resulting in the habitat changing. Not only is the water getting warmer, but it is also reducing the amount of sea ice. And sea ice, one of the big features of the Arctic, is an incredibly important habitat. It's an important habitat for animals like seals and also for animals that hunt seals, like polar bears. But it's also really, really cool sea ice. Now, here's a great thing that you can try at home. If you make two ice cubes, one with salty water and one with just normal tap water, put them in the freezer, leave them overnight, if you then get some food coloring and drop it on those ice cubes, you will see that the saltwater ice cube has tiny channels running through it. This is because when salty water freezes, it doesn't con the ice doesn't contain salt. So as it freezes, 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 that salty water gets concentrated and then runs through, leaving small channels. That provides what we call a microhabitat for algae and other creatures. And that has a really important 
uh, source of food for animals like sea urchins and sea stars, starfish, uh, living on the bottom of the Arctic Ocean? Great question. Um, Joanna uh, Marshall from Grooville School, is the Arctic Ocean the coldest ocean? Yes, it is. It is the coldest ocean. Uh, but it never, the temperature of the water never gets below about minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. And that's because if it gets lower than that, it turns into ice. Uh, so the lowest temperature of water that we find anywhere really in the world's ocean is about minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. But great, great question. Um, another from um, Grooville School um, is, is the Arctic Ocean warming up more quickly than everywhere else? And if so, why? It's, this is a really great question and, a, and, and quite a, a, a complex question to answer. And in fact, there was only uh, a bit of research published uh, in February this year explaining this. But, but basically, we, we can look at something fairly, fairly simple. Now, the Arctic Ocean is warming about twice as fast as the West, rest of the world's ocean. And one of the main reasons why it's warming is that it's losing the ice on top of it. Now, ice is nice and white. It reflects solar energy effectively back into the atmosphere. If that ice melts, the dark ocean absorbs more solar heat. And then in turn, that melts ice, so it has less reflective capacity, less reflective ability, and that cycle is called a positive feedback loop. It's amplifying, making greater the warming. So the more the ice melts, the warmer the Arctic gets, the more the ice melts, the warmer the Arctic gets. But what we're also finding now is that warm, the ocean is warming in depth, in the depths. We've got lots of warm, deep water. And as that warm, deep water comes from the Pacific and the Atlantic into the Arctic Ocean, the difference in heat between the deep water and the surface cold water is making that warmth come faster from the Pacific and the Atlantic. So in fact, cold ocean, the fact that we looked at before that the Arctic Ocean is cold, means that the deep water is trying to warm it faster as well. So the Arctic is a really, really tricky and fragile position at the moment, being warmed from two different ways, from deep water and from melting ice on the surface. Wow. Uh, this is, I love this question. Are there sharks uh, in the Arctic Ocean, um, or is it too cold for them? There is a really cool shark in the Arctic Ocean. It's the Greenland shark. And we think it is the longest living vertebrate on the planet. And they have worked out, they found one female uh, that is over 400 years old, which I think absolutely amazing. They're pretty big sharks, they're about um, 20 feet long. Um, but they're very, very slow uh, in the cold waters, but very, very cool. So you do get sharks up in the Arctic. They're not just a tropical animal. Um, we're going now to Chesham School. Um, some great questions that you've been sending through. Um, Chesham, how cold is the water? It really varies. Um, when we've been up there, it's been a... Uh, probably a few degrees above freezing, um, so about one, two degrees uh, Celsius. On other days, it's maybe been about minus 0.5, minus one. So about to freeze, but not freezing. And I think we can, I don't know whether the webcam up at the Arctic station might be able to show us the kind of temperatures that we normally experience when we're up in the Arctic. It could be a really snowy day up there um, and not be able to see the ocean. Um, but Ellie, I'm wondering whether we can see the webcam and you can tell us what, what, what's the weather like in the Arctic in Svalbard at the moment? Absolutely. So if I just show you, this camera here 
is our live weather window. We have a camera on the top of the hill. And we're looking down at the Neolosund Research Station. You can see it's this is the last 24 hours. It's a pretty grotty, grimy, grey day. If I just play through the last 24 hours, it's a whiteout, and then uh, pretty much a snowstorm comes in, and you can't see much at all. So we can see there's not much snow on the ground because recently there's been some warm weather which has melted, but there's a big snowstorm coming through at the moment. So pretty miserable and uh, grey, cloudy day there today, as opposed to some days we've seen it's been crystal clear and, and beautiful. Ellie, thank you so much. Um, one of those murky days, definitely a day not for doing field work and a day for staying in and sorting samples. That is one of the difficult things of doing research in the Arctic, is planning in enough weather days so when those sort of big winds and blizzards and everything else come through. One year, I remember that we looked at the wind chill factor, and this was, I think, in March, and it was down to minus 58.5 degrees Celsius um, with the wind chill on a, on a weather day. Um, really not a day uh, for being outside trying to fiddle around with science equipment. So we stayed inside and sorted our samples, getting ready for the next decent day out. But coming um, back to the questions here, um, we've got some great questions. What is the one thing um, that everyone could start doing after today to help the world's oceans? And that's from uh, Mrs. Uh, Francis. Um, at St. Bede's Roman Catholic Primary School. I mean, I think the one thing uh, from a um, school point of view and everybody point of view really is, I'm just going to come back to carbon, especially for the, for the Arctic Ocean. Um, it really is driving huge environmental change, the woman, and so we really, really need to get a handle on how much carbon we emit. And so I would say, um, just think about this, and this is a response to the current pandemic as well, build back better. So re-examine all the things that you do and work out as a school, as a home, how you can build back better. And if you want to break that down into some, some easy pieces, build back better in the way you travel, build back better in the way that you eat, Right. Do a project at school on low carbon food. Yeah, that will probably involve or should involve also eating less meat and less carbon intensive food sources and build back better in, in the way that you, that you live as well in the stuff that you have. So travel, food and stuff. Just look at those and make sure we're reducing our impact on the planet. But really, really important that we take this time of, for some of us, isolation, for many of you, um, a different way of learning, but to reflect and to make sure that when we come back to some sense of normality, or as we build back, that it's a better way of building than um, we had before. Really great questions. Um, so we're going to come now to, to some more. This is from uh, Thunderdeep World School. How do people survive in the Arctic? That's a really good question. Now, what we find the difference often between animals surviving in extreme places and humans surviving in extreme places. So animals, we see a number of adaptations. We see fur, we see fat, blubber natural ways of insulation to keep warm. For people, we normally look at equipment, kit, clothing. And for the early people in the Arctic, it would have been using furs and other methods they saw in the natural world. Now, really, surviving in the Arctic is about clothing, um, is about insulation, is about um, shelter, um, and making sure your diet is giving you enough calories to survive in the cold. So you're needing probably about twice as many, three times as many calories um, up, up in the Arctic um, as you would normally at home. The other thing to remember is the Arctic is a 
technically a desert and you really need to watch your hydration as well. So making sure you're taking on enough fluids. Um, so those are just some basic survival things in the Arctic. Kit and clothing, super, super important. Lots of layers, warm layers. I don't have a massive jacket on today, um, but make sure that you're wearing lots and lots of layers. Um, coming on, um, what happens if all the ice melts um, in the Arctic? Now, this is a really important question, and I think we should be able to link in the live chat to an investigation that we have on this, is that there are two types of ice that you're going to find in the Arctic. You're going to find um, sea ice, and that's when the sea freezes um, when it gets below minus 1.8 degrees, and that happens on a seasonal basis. There is some permanent sea ice still around the North Pole. And then you get land ice formed over hundreds and thousands of years as snow falls, compresses, turns into ice, glaciers, ice sheets. Now, if the sea ice were to melt, um, that would be an issue because the Arctic Ocean warms and would affect climate, would affect habitat, would affect a whole host of things. If the land ice melts, that is what contributes to sea level rise. So if all the ice in the Arctic were to melt, it'd be about a seven meter sea level rise. And if all the ice in the Antarctic were to melt, it would be about a 60, 70 meter sea level rise. So that's what would happen if the ice were to melt in the Arctic. Um, great question. Um, from South Witham Academy, um, apparently you're based um, at the source of the river Witham, and you're interested in which ocean that flows into. Now, all the rivers uh, in Britain, in the UK, uh, flow into the Atlantic Ocean Basin. Now, one important thing, uh, thing to remember on World Ocean Day is to drop the S, and we are not World Oceans Day anymore, it's World Ocean Day, and that is to emphasize that the ocean is a connected body of water. It isn't separate lakes um, that we might think, if we call it the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific, the Southern Ocean, or the Arctic Ocean. These are essentially basin, basins, sort of like dips, um, which we've given names to, but they're all connected. So there are two ways of answering this. The river with them flows into the Atlantic Ocean, but perhaps more correctly on World Ocean Day, it flows into the World Ocean. And it's important to remember because that connection means if we come to the next question from East Farley Primary, is plastic pollution a threat to the Arctic Ocean? Yes, it is because of the pollution that we're putting into the ocean in general. And that connection means that those ocean currents are carrying pollution from all different parts of the ocean into the Arctic, but especially from Northwestern Europe. And so, yes, we're finding plastic pollution in the Arctic and more and more research is being done to find out how much there is and also where it's coming from. Is it a local pollution problem or is it because of the pollution that we're creating in Europe getting into the ocean and being carried further north on the ocean currents? But it's a great, great question. Um, the rarest creature in the Arctic Ocean, great question from East Farley Primary. Um, so the rarest creature, I'm not entirely sure, but one of the rarer ones that I would love to see is the narwhal. Uh, the narwhal, essentially a cross between a unicorn and a dolphin, amazing creature. You can see them traveling along leads. Leads is what we call the gaps in sort of ice flows between two bits of sea ice, these dark sort of almost like river-like pictures, jagged rivers, um, which are, that's what they look like from the air. And um, so amazing uh, creatures. So I think we should all organize a novel expedition to go and find those majestic but rare creatures um, up in the Arctic. 
But coming on to this follow-up question on that is how can we help preserve these animals? Oh, how can you preserve animals in the Arctic Ocean? It's really about protecting the habitat. And I'm going to come back to carbon. Yes, plastic pollution is an issue as well, but it's building back better. We are all connected. We are all sea creatures. We need to remember that everything that we do makes a difference. To everyone who's watching, you matter. What you do matters. You are not too small to make a difference. So whether that's cycling or walking to school or work, whether that's reducing the amount of meat that you consume, whether that's turning off the screen and getting outside in a socially distanced and responsible way and taking your fun from nature rather than from a uh, device all those things will help, and they really will help. And tell other people, share widely that you're wearing blue today, that you're supporting World Ocean Day, because you matter, and the ocean matters, and together, that looks like a beautiful future. So, what marine life is most threatened at the moment in the Arctic Ocean? Another really, really great question. Um, and if we're, we're looking at um, different types of, of life, it is really those um, animals being put under pressure by habitat loss. So we're looking at things like sea ice. Um, we're looking at animals like seals and polar bears. And it's important to remember that when we're, when we're talking about um, threats, but also thinking about pressure. So it's not that um, individually um, we know that this animal has definitely um, been killed by climate change. It's more that it's an overall general pressure on the population and finding it harder to hunt, finding it harder to get food, the normal ways of, of, of um, Hunting are changing, so a polar bear might be eating more eggs, um, for instance, um, that we might have um, sort of small plankton, which are being affected by chemistry changes in the ocean, that this is general overall pressure um, that is causing um, the harm to Arctic life. We're going to come now to our be more primary um, and at school, we have a project called Project Plastic. Amazing, fantastic work where we are trying to clean our local community and beach and trying to educate people about plastic. Given that you are thousands of miles away, can you still see the effects of plastic pollution yourself? It is it's a great work you're doing on, on Project Plastic. We do find um, plastic pollution in the Arctic. Um, it is, it is an issue. Um, mainly we find um, things like um, old like fishing gear and shipping gear, so ropes and buoys and, and that kind of stuff um, on, on the beach. There's an annual beach clean, so it's um, by the community up here. So it's great that you are also doing a beach clean where you are. Um, but the most important thing, I mean, if I think about the, the things put in place, we, I think we have about 17, 20 different recycling categories um, on the Neolison station where the UK Arctic Research Station is based. Um, and it's really trying to, A, everything you, you bring to the Arctic, um, you are um, really careful about not taking unnecessary things, um, really cutting down on, on what you consume. But B, if you do have to consume something, that you're really, really careful about how it's recycled. I'm, I'm, we, we do have, I'd encounter really you in partnership with Common Seas, um, launching very soon um, an ocean plastics homeschool of about um, 15, 20 different activities. So, so do watch the space if that's something that you're interested in carrying on more with. Wow. Um, so from Gillside School, so just, we've got, um, there's a few more questions pre-submitted. 
And then we've got 10 questions we're going to do sort of rapid fire um, on um, the live chat. So do get your questions ready, and then we're going to do rapid fire in about sort of, sort of two, three minutes. Um, but from Gillside um, School, how did you prepare for living in the Arctic? Very, very lucky um, at the moment is that we have a station to live out of, so a really nice building um, <laughs> up in the Arctic. Um, with uh, small bedrooms and hot showers and, and, and decent food. Um, so preparation, there's a lot you, you, around preparing the, the science equipment, preparing the communications equipment for when we do the broadcasts, um, for planning and that side of things. But we're not walking across vast amounts of Arctic Ocean. So it doesn't have that same uh, um, you know, training, dragging tires behind you um, for weeks and months on end to, to train for. Um, scariest uh, wildlife moment during my time in the Arctic. Uh, wow, it's scariest. I think on one expedition, uh, a seal came up one of our sampling holes. Um, so that was um, scary in so far as a bit of a shock. I think I don't know who was more surprised, the seal or us. Um, but we, I mean, the Arctic, we haven't had many uh, animal encounters up in the Arctic. Um, again, we've got this research, how, where do the research team get their food supplies from and what's your favorite food to eat in the Arctic? Great question. We're very lucky in, in so far when we're at the base, we, that comes in by ship. And my favorite food to eat in the Arctic, um, there's some really, um, sort of not quite great food. Um, so you can get reindeer, um, pizzas, um, but we'll, we'll leave those limb. My favorite food to eat in the Arctic, um, the food's Great. I, I really, really like all the sort of yogurts and seeds and and fruit becomes quite um quite a big thing. <gasps> I've just remembered my favorite food in the Arctic, and this is super, super important uh for all um potential polar explorers out there is peanut MMs. Um so peanut peanut MMs, really lots of fat, lots of sugars, lots of keep warm energy. Uh, so never go to the Arctic without a bag of peanut M&Ms. That's my top top tip from the day. If you remember nothing else, always take peanut M&Ms to the Arctic. Um, and the training that you have to do for working in the Arctic, I'm very lucky I did lots of uh, Himalayan expeditions um, in my early 20s and then got invited to go to the Antarctic and just kind of made it up. So just go, go do and um, get out into the wilds, um, get out... Um, and in some sort of gnarlier and gnarlier situations. So you're prepared for that. And then you need a skill. So is it communications? Is it education? Is it uh, videography? Is it filmmaking? Is it photography? Is it science? Awesome science nurse. So if you want to get to the polar regions, science is a great route to get up there. So work really, really hard at science um, and do everything your science teacher tells you to. We're now going to get onto the quick fire um, live questions. I'm not going to scroll back up. I'm just going to take them as they come. Uh, and so if you have posted it before, please post it again. Um, Olivia Stetler, how cold is it? Um, today in the Arctic, I am not sure. It's probably going to be about three, um, five degrees. We've got a question from 6A Kings Court School. Do you have a big research center in the Arctic? Um, it's not huge, um, the UK Arctic Research Station in the Olsen, but there are lots of other um, countries that sort of form an international science village. Um, so, yes, it is, it is quite a big sort of like setup um, with about probably, uh, if we weren't in lockdown, there are probably about 150 researchers up here at the moment. Um, how can our children become involved in Arctic exploration? Um, science is a really great route and get onto the British Antarctic survey and look how you get into there. How long would it take to die in the Arctic Ocean if you weren't prepared? Um, probably just a few minutes. Um, get into a job like mine. Um, make it up as you go along. Follow your passions. Be curious. Work as hard as you possibly can and be top of everything you, you do. Um, just, just go for it. Um, are the Arctic marine life evolving? Um, we do see some uh, behavioral evolution in, in um, polar bears eating different stuff. Uh, what fish do polar bears eat? That's just, sorry, um, mainly eat seals and eggs and chicks. Um, sharks we've done, which is the Greenland shark. 
is it more or less cloudy since global lockdown? I don't think uh, global lockdown has affected the cloudiness um, in the Arctic. Um, it may may have done, but I haven't seen any research on that. Um, so it's a fairly filthy, cloudy day today. So obviously, um, I don't think not today. Um, from Maya and Noah in France, how can we help animals in the Arctic from home? Cut your carbon, biggest thing, and um, stop eating um, as much meat and travel by bike and foot. Uh, biggest mountain in the Arctic? I'm not sure. Probably somewhere on Greenland. Tallest iceberg? Great questions coming through. How fat is the ice melting? So sea ice um, is between about one um, or like nothing and then five meters. The glacier were inside about 100 meters thick. Um, some of the Greenland ice sheet about 3,000 meters thick. Um, Neve, how do you know so much? <laughs> um, it's basically having the privilege of spending lots and lots of wonderful time in remote places with a very, very clever scientists. Um, so that's mainly where I get my information from. Um, how many snowstorms come through every year? Too many. Um, I don't like it when it's too snowy. Once in a while, it's nice. Um, how deep is the Arctic? We've got that's the Malloy uh, deep at 5,550 meters. Have we seen any whales? We've got uh, beluga, um, minke, and blue, I think, last year. I'm just looking at Ellie just to remember which, which whales we've seen. And then down, down in the south, um, lots of humpbacks. Um, around Antarctica. How cold can the Arctic get? Very, very, very cold. And the coldest temperature, I've had ambient temperatures be minus 48 degrees Celsius, which was pretty brutal, and with wind chill down to minus 60 odd. Uh, what's the smallest fish in the Arctic, a baby one? Um, how many species live in the Arctic? These are great questions. These are sort of Googleable questions, um, which I don't have all. Um, in my head at the moment. Is a narwhal's uh, horn really a tooth? Yes, it is. Um, how far have you drilled and what have you found? Um, drilling, I've only drilled into the glaciers and into the sea ice um, to take core samples. Uh, we have found algae and bacteria, bacterial communities, and that's what we're looking at in the tiny wee things about how ice works on a more complex um, basis. Uh, do we dive in the Arctic? I don't dive in the Arctic, but lots of people do. Um, Errington Primary, how can our children raise awareness of global warming and World Ocean Day during lockdown? Um, I think that we can go on from, we can develop the theme of rainbows into something different. We can go on, take that onto a rainbow planet. How can we give thanks to our planet as well as our carers and carry that on and to build, build back better? So add to your rainbow pictures that might be in your windows and come up with a sunnier, brighter, brilliant planet. So go for that as a new idea. Um, we have, apart from our everyday actions, are scientists working on ways to prevent the ice melting, if this is not enough from George. Scientists are brilliant about giving us the information to make to base our decisions on. There are some forms of geoengineering, which means coming up with these massive sort of experiments about how to change the planet. But the basics are we have to change. And if you want someone to help us, it's pressuring government to make those changes. Um, can you live in the Arctic? Yes, you can. Um, how many different types of penguins are there in the Arctic? There are so many no penguins. There are no penguins in the Arctic. Penguinless place. Um, confused sometimes. Uh, there are two types of penguin-esque animal, three types um, in the northern hemisphere. That's the puffin, the great auk, now extinct, and the little auk. Um, AUK for Orc. Have you seen an iceberg collapse? Yes, I have. Um, and I was in a very little boat in Antarctica. That was um, scary. Um, how many, uh, can you make an igloo? Uh, I can make a dog loo. No, I made an igloo, a small one, dog loo um, for dogs. Um, how many snowstorms happen a year? I don't know that. Do plastics in the ocean freeze? They can freeze in the sea ice. Do Arctic foxes live um, where we are in the Arctic? Yes, they do. They're sweet and their awesomeness. And they do pee on another scientist's experiment, so he's not quite so fond of them as we are. Um, uh, where are we? How many polar bears are in the Arctic? They're very hard to count, um, but lots. And the, 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 the population in Svalbard has increased over the years since the ban on hunting in the, in the 70s, and now is, is, is under pressure again. Um, have I ever seen a polar bear? No, I'd love to see a polar bear. Members of the team have. We thought we saw one uh, through a blizzard and fired some flares to, to warn it off. 
um, but never actually definitely seen a polar bear. Um, how did you get to the Arctic and how much do you get paid? If you want to become a millionaire, do not become an Arctic explorer. Um, and we get there by plane. Um, what is the most common whale in the Arctic Ocean? I think probably the minke is probably the most common. Um, the most like arctic whale is the beluga whale. Um, what my favorite moment in the Arctic, sitting outside the tent in late spring, uh, watching the sun not set, so the sun very close to the horizon, and turning the spindrift, which is the smoky sort of uh, snow goat drift across the surface of the frozen ocean, and seeing that turn into blues and pinks and golds. Uh, just beautiful, peaceful, beautiful. It is amazingly beautiful. All the day that the air froze, and it was like walking through a cloud of diamonds or fairy dust. Amazing, amazing moments. Um, can non-marine life help people understand marine life in the Arctic? I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, Tracy Valance, how do you stay warm? Lots of clothes and M&Ms, peanut you know, M&Ms. How long is each trip um, to the Arctic? Um, it is, um, at the moment, just a few weeks. Um, longer, if possible, just so we have, if there's lots of bad weather, we have time to complete our research. It only actually takes about a week, but we normally need about two or so weeks just to make sure that we're not blown away when we're doing it. Um, amazing questions. I think we're running out of time, Ellie. Is that right? We're coming to the end. So I'm just going to take um, two more questions. Um, have I ever been in a risky situation? Um, I don't think it's been too risky. I think you do so much work on, um, on, on, on all your... I nearly crashed into an iceberg, in fact. I suppose that's risky. Uh, that wasn't on the risk assessment. But you do all these risk assessments and everything else, so nearly crashed into an iceberg. And it, is it fun because it looks fun from Ruby Ruby? It is amazing fun. I love the Arctic so much, and I hope that you've learned something and I hope that one day you get to enjoy it too and that we can all work together to make sure that we keep this amazing, amazing, beautiful but fragile place for the future. So build back better, World Ocean Day, make it awesome, make it count, make it matter because you matter. Thank you so much for being part of this World Ocean Day broadcast all about the Arctic Ocean. Take care. Do use the resources on our website on Encounter EDU to learn more about the Arctic. Stay in touch and enjoy the rest of the wonderful sessions on World Oceans Day for schools. Take care. Bye-bye.